I was I was talking to a friend about this, um, kind of about your and I's conversations, and the history of the London Stock Exchange goes back three, four hundred years, yeah. Yeah. and it was one of the primary ways that Britain kind of funded its colonialism, didn't it? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I mean no, but I mean, no, just not just the stock exchange, but you know, you think about um, trade finance. Yeah, I mean, mm. there was there had to be a way of people to basically finance what they were doing and defer risks. Yep. Um, and that that's really what London has been about. I mean, it's been about financing trade. That's why the city of London became such a powerhouse. That's why we have such a large advisory community there. Mm. Was because we needed to come up with these mechanisms to finance trade trade around the on the globe, and the UK had to be a an out given it's a an island, you know, mm-hmm. we had to be an outward looking country um, in order to trade. Um, you know, we can I probably won't want to belabor the point when it comes to colonialism, but um, yeah, you know, sorry, I... <laughs> yeah, you know, but no, but certainly that I mean that activity did lead to other things that you know. It's a reason why London is the international center of finance today. You know, it's the biggest foreign exchange trading um, center in the world. Wow. Well, no, and, and by that, I wasn't trying to slight the UK at all. It was, as I was thinking about the history of the United States, as opposed to kind of the UK, UK feels like it's always been kind of outward looking for business, whereas the United States is large, so huge that it tends to kind of look inward for business. Um, and so it would make sense where the London Stock Exchange would have an investor base that's actually much more international as well as they would be used to investing in international facing countries. 